Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of our Subcrew Investor Series. Uh, we're going to talk to all the investors of Subcrew and, and find out a bit more about um, who they are and, and why they um, got involved and partnered with Subcrew. Uh, my name is James Bailey. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. And today we're talking to Renick Paley. Uh, Renick is um, the CEO of, of Stratos, um, one of our lead investors from uh, Series A round. Good to have you on board, Renick. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh... yeah. Really happy to be involved. Yeah, thank you. So, Rick, tell me, um, what's your background? How did you get involved with crypto? Uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, so um, the first time I really uh, got interested in, in crypto was in 2015 um, when I was doing some research on um, banks and, and financial uh, technology in emerging markets. And I stumbled upon Ethereum and looked at the technology or what it was intending to be and thought, you know, this uh, becomes what it seems like it can be, that this is going to change the world and be really impactful. So um, from that point, uh, I left where I was working at the time, which was an investment firm and uh, started Stratos to start investing in the space. It's always interesting, right? There's a lot of people in this industry that have come from, from the investment firm uh, do you still have a lot of peers back there in that world that you're trying to bring over into the new world these days? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, people are, it's easier to convince people these days. And I don't know if that's because they're just sort of seeing the price action and, and saying, okay, there's clearly something to this. Or if more and more people who are kind of traditional finance people are doing their homework and starting to understand what this is all about. Um, but yeah, still, I would say most people are not all in on the space yet by any means, but more people are starting to recognize its its merits and it's not as much of like a, uh, you know. Um, a fringe world out there for. Uh, yeah, um, as it was maybe in 2017 or 2018. I've noticed that a lot as well. Um, you know, when we're, we're, we're um, hiring a lot at the moment and, and the conversations these days, um, you know, there's a lot more in interest in blockchain as, as more of a, a, a foundation for the future of the internet rather than just a speculative currency kind of platform, right. uh, a place to make a quick um, buck, um, which is yeah. great because it obviously provides that um, that validity to what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. So tell us, Renick, so how did you um, learn about SubCore? How did you find us? Um, so I'm an advisor at the uh, Berkeley Blockchain Accelerator. And so we got introduced to Sam through that. And uh, from there, built the, the relationship and got to know uh, subquery and on finality. So, um, you know, that's, that's where it came from. But, you know, I think actually to your last point, um, it really feels like over the last year, people have come to understand that blockchain is a lot more than speculative cryptocurrencies. And I think... Subquery is actually a perfect example of the opposite of that. You know, subquery is this thing that is a very key piece of infrastructure. No one would really look at that and say this is a speculative investment at all. It's it's actually something that's very concrete in the way that you can identify its value in in its ecosystem, um, and it has a you know a, an economic system built into it that is designed to be functional and sustainable not just you know something that only works when there's a bull market so um i think it's a perfect example of how things are moving in that direction yeah um it is it is quite important to us right um you know in a way sub is a foundational piece of that technology stack to which you would build uh, all these applications in the future whether they're in, in DeFi or, or nfts or, or what's next you know what's next uh but, you know, we've done a lot of work in, in, in that foundation area. And in a way, we're kind of ahead of the curve, but we're we're expecting a huge amount of growth, um, especially in Polkadot, but also in a lot of other um, what we call Generation 3 blockchains, mm -hmm. uh, Generation 3 Layer 1 chains that are kind of coming up and, and building their own communities around those. Uh, are you quite um, in depth, uh, involved in the Polkadot community or in, in that aspect of the blockchain? Yeah, so... Um... You know, we are also part of the Polkadot Venture Network um, and so uh, are pretty involved in um, the community looking at sort of the next wave of projects that are 
coming up and being built on uh, the infrastructure of Polkadot that has been developed. Um, and I think, you know, Polkadot in general is a really, really interesting ecosystem because it, it really is forward looking in terms of a, what the multi-chain world is going to look like in the future. Um, and I think, you know, it was designed from the ground up to be something that enabled various teams to create many different chains and, and have their own versions of, of um, certain, you know, consensus mechanisms within parameters and, and so, and programming languages. And so I think, um, you know, subquery is, is in a way linking that all together um, and enabling people to uh, understand what's going on in the space that I think is going to really see pretty significant growth over the next year or two. You know, a lot of the building blocks have been laid, so to speak, you know, the relay chain is there, the uh, early um, crowd loans have started to happen and, you know, clearly have been really successful. So we're on the cusp of a lot of this sort of development that maybe people who are part of the ecosystem have been anticipating for a while, but that's because all the pieces have had to come into place. And now I think this is where subquery is really going to start to shine. Mm, those crowd loans are, are, are super exciting right now. Um, you know, um, with the first one on Polkadot, um, you know, completing and, and obviously, you know, Kusama has been going for some time and I, th but I think 12 or 13 crowd loans by now. Um, it's really kind of, it's, it's, it seems like everyone in Kusama has seen that this crazy idea for crowd loans has worked and it's worked very successfully. And we've seen huge amounts of, of, um, of, of money locked up for a year on these crowd mm -hmm. loans. So we're just seeing this, this polka dot and Kusama ecosystem really start to take off and get that, yep. that interest from the bigger retail community. Um, at least it's, what yeah, we there's get. a, there, there's a lot of interesting things to, to learn by observing what's going on with the crowd loans. I think on the one hand, people, you know, a cynic about the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems might have said, well, you know, basically you just have to rent space in perpetuity on the relay chain. But what I think the crowd loans have shown is actually they're a great mechanism for involving the broader community and distributing the governance token of a particular project pretty widely. And so in that sense, they've been really successful. And I think if you just look at token prices of projects pre and post crowd loan, it seems that the crowd loan actually has increased the market cap of those projects so significantly that it's effectively financed the rental cost of the, the relay chain slot. So net net, it's, it's a positive hmm. for all the parties involved. And then to, to think, well, where did all of this money come from? that's being locked up in these uh, crowd loans. Well, it came from the, the rise in value of the Polkadot and, and Kusama ecosystems to begin with. You know, it's almost created by that success, you know, in and of itself. And so in that sense, um, it's, it's creating a, a place for that value creation to be utilized in a useful way. Right. Otherwise, the dot and, and KSM would just be floating around in the world, not really yeah. having anywhere to go. So it's actually when you look at it holistically, it's a very it's a, it's a system that has functioned very well. It's an excellent application of that. That's, you know, that tactic that I think everyone tries to use, which is locking down, the, you know, the supply of tokens into 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 value bearing, um, you know, or, or yield bearing uh, uses, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been interesting, right? Like at Subcrew, we, we do a lot of one of our most successful or uh, one of our most popular uh, Subcrew projects is a project that provides crowd loan data to a wide variety mm -hmm. of websites, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been amazing watching the growth of this 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 project, uh, ex ex uh, um, uh, especially as the Polkadot crowd loan and auctions begin. Uh, it's just gone through the roof. Uh, and we've found all these websites out there using this data from from Subquery. And one thing that you know I'm keen to sit down and do after um, the dust settles somewhat um, is really dig deep into each of these crowd loans and these auctions and figure out you know like what are the what is the themes behind these? Which ones are kind of community driven mm -hmm. versus uh, whale driven? 
uh, which mm-hmm. ones have been built up by the power of everyone. Um, it's like, you know, Barack Obama, when he first got elected years ago, you know, it, it, people talked about that being the first example of a huge amount of community donating on average $20 to this campaign, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which one of the polka dot and Kusama uh, slots have been granted in some way. And, and maybe that's a good indication for which projects have the strongest communities. Uh, yeah, that's a really interesting point. And I, I look forward to reviewing that analysis with you <laughs> when you're done with it. Um, I suspect that it's going to look like a power law. Um, and that's just the nature of, you know, how tokens have been distributed in a lot of these, uh, you know, in the DOT and, and KSM ecosystem. But I think, um, you know, what you're saying just like really highlights why we're so excited about subquery and, and really the core component of our investment thesis, which is it's so highly levered to this. The success of subquery is highly levered to the success of this entire ecosystem. You know, every single use case where data and analysis is required is going to play into subquery's position. And so, you know, we can talk about all these interesting things happen- happening. And then if we look another layer deeper, we're going to realize that subquery has been used uh, to help drive that process in some way. And that's one of our challenges is, is figuring out who's using us <laughs> because we find all these these websites built off our data. And that's fine. That's that's a core kind of um, a tenant of our, our platform is that it's open. It's, you can anyone yep. can use it. Anyone can access this data. All we're doing is taking publicly available data, and organizing it, and giving some structure to it so that the average person can 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 use it and 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 take advantage of that data in a more intuitive way. Um, so that's yeah, that's a really good point. Um, tell me about um, so Stratos. What what like what what's your investment thesis? I guess um, how do you look at projects? Yeah, well, one one thing I want to say, I, I think you're 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 being very modest in saying, you know, just taking public data and putting it in a place where people can, the average person can use it. That's no small feat. Um, you know, obviously the the Google example is one that we used in our investment memo, but um, you know, sub. Google is is doing essentially the same thing, and clearly it's a very important uh, piece of infrastructure in Web two. So subquery will be the same for Web three, and I think in this case the dimensionality of the data is so much greater because you've got all this historical data, all this transaction data in addition to just state, and so you could think of Google almost as just state history um, if you want to try and draw that analog. So the potential for subquery to be huge is definitely there. Um, to answer your question about, you know, Stratos's overall investment thesis. So we kind of think of the world in a, a blueprint or like a roadmap, which, you know, we call it our, our web three blueprint, which is to say, we have a, a vision about where the world will ultimately go. And that's one where everyone is using some sort of web three application without even necessarily knowing that it's web three, it's integrated directly into their smartphone. They're using a decentralized finance, you know, in their day-to-day yeah. financial activities, you know, the next version of social media is going to be some sort of metaverse type concept. Um, you know, uh, their gaming, everything will have some sort of web three component and people won't even really know that it's web three versus web two, except for that. And that's really user... important, right? You know, like bringing, there's a lot of people that are already in the web three world already, but these are quite, uh, generally younger, but also people that are quite te- technologically astute. Um, the ch- yeah. challenge is building applications and, and environments where anyone can use it, that my parents can use it without even knowing yeah. that it's, it's in Web3. That's a challenge. Yeah, and I, I think it will take s- some time to get there. Um, and, you know, I think it's the nature of frontier technologies that, you know, sort of like the, the uh, more tech savvy people, the, the people working on it over the weekend and in, in their basement, so to speak, are the ones who are kind of driving it forward initially. And I think we're kind of there um, with Web3 right now. But in order to get to that future state, there are all these pieces of our blueprint that need to get built between now and then. And there's a couple of core verticals that we look at as being enablers of that end state. And so they don't necessarily happen in sequence. A lot of these things are happening in parallel. 
being developed together. So one of them is just broadly infrastructure. Another is identity. Another is, you know, mobile wallets. Another is, um, you know, bringing human judgment on chain. Another is just this metaverse idea, which I don't necessarily ascribe to the metaverse as being something that is, you know, a replacement for real world spaces. Although that's a subset of it. I think of metaverse as being this idea that, you know, your internet life has more financial value than your day-to-day real world life. I think we're, we're like NFTs are kind of this, this craze is kind of the first piece of that, but we see subquery as being part of that infrastructure component, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of remarkable to think how much volume there is in uh, web three and crypto today considering what the transaction costs are in Ethereum. Mm. And that basically means, you know, if it's a $200 gas cost, um, that means that the vast majority by count of everyday transactions are not viable on chain. But what happens when the transaction costs get cut by 10 X or a hundred X and, you know, uh, the chains on in the polka dot ecosystem are enabling some of that. And so we're going to see this explosion of all of these other things that I'm talking about that suddenly become viable and Mm. accessible to the average person anywhere in the world. Um, And as a result of that, you need to have the ability to understand the data and what's going on. You need something like subquery. So it's part of that uh, pillar of our blueprint. Yeah, the, you know, microtransactions are going to be the next big thing here. And and that's what Polkadot and other, you know, uh, generation three, layer ones are going to enable Um, and i like you know your point around i completely agree you know um there are certain key parts that need to be put in place for this web3 kind of migration um you know identity uh uh, authentication infrastructure uh, and and under all of that really is is data is being able to access data in a fast efficient um very optimal way you know, there's some stat out there I think people throw around, which I don't know how true it is, but uh, they say that the amount of data that humanity generates doubles every every two years. Uh, yep. It's like Moore's law for data. And, and that's that's one big thing that we need to focus on is building tools to harness the huge volume of data we're generating and put it to productive uses, uh, which is, I guess, yep. what we're trying to do at SubQuery. Yeah, exactly. Well, assuming that a lot of that future data creation is happening on chain, subquery is in a pretty good spot to be a really important component of that. So um, a last question I might have is, is what, what's your advice for any other um, entrepreneur or person wanting to set up a, a company and work in blockchain? What, what would be your advice to get started or um, how to begin? Uh, well, I guess maybe two things. Um, one is that uh, forking another project that has already proven it works is interesting, but less interesting than really trying to like move the ball down the field. Like, I, you know, sushi swap versus Uniswap, that was a useful thing. I'm not saying, you know, that they obviously were able to do something that was valuable for the Web3 community, just given the success of sushi swap and the amount of liquidity that's in there. But, you know, the harder things are what. It are creating the the new you know next step of technology and and so i encourage uh would-be founders to do that the other thing i would say is really focus on community because web3 is all about community and you know it doesn't require someone who is you know really great at like social media or something you know i've seen i've seen it firsthand every day with goldfinch the way that we've built the community and it's, it's just by being consistent and giving good information to people and, you know, talking about what the vision is and, and what's, what's exciting to you, because there will be a subset of people in the world who find that also really interesting and, and you'll attract them if you're just consistent about it. And I think that's one of the things that's really critical to success for these mm, projects. I can agree more. I've like, I've continuously blown away by the, the interest by our community and when I, you know, when we hire new people, for example, at Subquery, they're always amazed by, you know, how big the community is, how how mm-hmm. how fast it's growing, and and how many people are in there every day, kind of engaging with it. Um, but you're right; it's just 
bring everyone along on the mission. And that's one thing you, you, when you, when you, when you work in this every day, you kind of don't talk about it enough. You don't talk about that vision. You kind of assume people uh, know it, but it's important just to keep saying it, keep saying it so that, um, you know, you, no one ever forgets it or um, everyone can completely understand it. There's like a, there's a rule. Yeah. I think someone's told me, right. It's um, you got to be able to keep saying something so well that if someone calls you at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning, <laughs> and you're like six vodka Red Bulls deep, you can still <laughs> say it exactly the same way. Um, yeah. And I think that's quite relevant to this. There you go. Well, I'm glad you're getting your practice in. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll be the one calling you. Um, but I, I've got to hand it to you and the rest of the sub career team. You guys are doing a really good job of, of getting the word out and building the community and, and you know, keeping people uh, excited about what you're building. So you're a great example. Yeah. Thank you very much, Renick. And, um, and thank you very much for your support from Stratos. Um, there's very, investors that are very kind of arm's length. And then there are investors that take a real deep um, uh, view of what we're doing and, and try to understand at a, a, another level of, of, of how we're trying to grow the community and grow our products. And, and you're definitely one of the latter. So um, we've been very, um, we find it very valuable, the feedback that we get from you. So um, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, and um, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. Thanks for the kind words.